Honestly, in the beginning, it was just, I, I just started 3D modeling like last year. So in the beginning, it was just kind of what can I make? But what am I not limited to make? But um, as I progressed, it was, it was, yeah, a lot of inspiration from skating, you know? hop into it so first off what's your name and where are you from uh nico riccioni i'm from allentown pennsylvania so uh in the beginning of like your skateboarding what kind of influenced you to start and um who and what were like some of the things that got you started honestly if i i'm, I'm trying to remember I, I would have to say i think like a friend of mine growing up in the neighborhood had a skateboard yeah. i just watched him kind of roll around he wasn't like good or anything but he would just i'd see him push up and down the street and uh, so I eventually got one for Christmas or something. And um, yeah, I would just push around my house. I had a little hockey stick that I would try to ollie over and that's just really how it started. And ever since then, I just, I couldn't put it down ever. Hey man. Did you have like uh, skate spots that you went to or to like like uh, skate parks or was it just like street? Um, yeah, when I was younger, well, when I first started skating, I was um, honestly maybe five or, five or six years old. So I was just like pushing around the driveway, but yeah. then, um, there's a skate park here in Allentown called Penn Skate. It's like the only indoor park we have. And uh, so for like the winters and stuff there, I was just there all the time. Every day after school, I would just go there. We're trying to get um, some indoor places here because we, we barely have like outdoor parks. We have a lot of DIY parks, but um, yeah. you know, like indoor parks is where it's at. Um, yeah. <laughs> how would you describe NFTs to someone like my grandma who like barely remembers my name? So like, how would you break it down to her to like really understand like what the hell do you do? I don't, I don't think it's possible, honestly, like it, to, to talk to someone who who is maybe so out of the loop of, of the technology, it's hard because even, uh, you know, even like my close friends and family, they'll ask me about it. And, I, and it's like, I'll try to explain it to them. I'll try to give them even the little knowledge that I know. I'm, I'm no professional or anything. And um, and yeah, it's hard to explain, man. But but the easiest way I would say is just um, it's just a way to authenticate digital art. That's probably the, the most simple form of how to say it. No, I like that. That's probably, that's my best. Cause even like when I was telling like, um, you know, my girlfriend, my, like my dad, I was like, yo, man, you and this really cool dude does like NFTs. They're like, oh yeah, I heard of that. But no one really understands like fully is like what you, what people are doing. And people are making a shit ton of money. So it's like, <laughs> people want to understand. Exactly. That's like, I think the hardest part is that People have, people have trouble finding the value in it. They just see the, you know, the picture, the JPEG on the screen, and they just don't get why it's valuable. And, and I can see why, because really just what makes it valuable is people saying it's valuable. You know what I mean? There's really like, there's, there's not much to it. You have to, you have to give it value by, you know, providing utility, providing use for the NFT. So that's, that's like what we're trying to do with Crooked Giants. Well, that's kind of like a perfect se segue. So like, why Crooked Giants? Like, what uh, what started the name and what got you to design that um, you know initial design for it? Yeah, Crooked Giants. I think I think the name just came from. So all the characters that I start that I've been drawing since I was a little kid are those guys with the crooked teeth. So it kind of just started crooked just because they all got crooked teeth and giants. Literally, just because the way I draw them and um, how I started drawing them, they're just big. They're like a hundred feet tall. <laughs> so it was really that that kind of simple, but um like as we started giving utility to the nfts it kind of fit anyway because the whole theme behind it is like they're crooks they're like criminals or whatever it's supposed to it's supposed to kind of symbolize um the nft provides you with so much utility that it feels like stealing you get a lot of discounts oh, you, you oh. get a lot of like perks no that's how i really like that that's really cool i think one of the first ones that like uh I noticed was like the Mona Lisa one. I thought that was really tough. Um, how do you feel about like uh, people like Klaus who kind of like take inspiration from like our pop culture and just kind of put it on its head? Cause like you have a distinct style from like maybe like no pupils and then like the crooked teeth. Um, how'd you kind of like develop that? Like you kind of mentioned it was in like your earlier drawings, but like tell me a little bit about that. I honestly don't even know where it started. Um, again, I've been drawn, I've been drawing those characters for, for years, maybe something with cartoons. Like I was saying, like I used to watch Cartoon Network a lot. A lot of people say it reminds them of like Courage the Cowardly Dog, that show. 
So maybe it's something like that. Maybe I liked that show and just kind of started drawing those characters. But I've always kind of been a fan of the, um, not necessarily like, necessarily like um, horror art, but just kind of like maybe eerie or like a little off. So yeah. that's kind of why I started drawing in that style, I think. Oh man. Um, so tell me a little bit about uh, your creative process to that. I noticed you did some people on your team and uh, just some skaters you know personally. So like what uh, what goes into like designing a new Crooked uh, like Giant? Um, honestly, in the beginning, it was just, I, I just started 3D modeling like last year. So in the beginning, it was just kind of what can I make? What am I not limited to make? But um, as I progressed, it was, it was, yeah, a lot of inspiration from skating, you know, just my friends, what they wear, you know, the kind of clothing they wear. We started putting those on the Giants and just um, trying to trying to keep it diverse as well. Like um, that was kind of a challenge was, okay, like I'm used to just drawing um, guys. You know I mean? I don't know why. It's just like, I would just draw a lot of like male characters. And I was like, well, I have to have female characters. I need to have female characters. So then I had to like learn that that side of it, how to draw female characters and then go into all their fashion senses, like what they like. So <laughs> I had like my, my girlfriend and like girlfriends that kind of just helped me out with that kind of shit. So it was relatively easy. Yeah, you need, uh, you need that like public uh, like perception, definitely when you're doing anything artistic. Yeah, um, yeah, it's made for everyone. So you gotta, you gotta cater it that way. <laughs> Uh, so how would you describe um, your artistic style, um, whether like your digital style or just like, um, how would you describe your NFTs? Um, I would just say, I mean, I think I think with Crooked Giants, we have something that looks different from the standard NFT collection that you see. You know what I mean? There's a lot of the, you know, the apes and there's a lot of knockoff of the apes. There's a lot of crypto punk knocks, knockoffs. Um, so I just think the characters we have are just different. But as far as the style, I th I'd say it's just, it's all kind of still cartoony, even though it's it's 3D animation, it's not 2D stuff. It's just very cartoon and kind of, I don't know, that kind of that kind of feel, I think. Yeah, it's definitely like surreal when uh, you look at it. Uh, I think like saying it's kind of cartoonish and like kind of uh, realistic at the same time, it's like such a like good point. Cause like just the texture alone is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, a friend of mine said the same thing. He st he started noticing when I would put the the hair on the characters. No, like, no, oh, you went crazy. Crazy. <laughs> you go crazy with that. It's so dope, man. Thank you, uh, thank you. All right, so if you could work with anyone uh, for a project, whether that's like an NFT through skateboarding, you know, like brands like Nike or whatever, who would you want to work with, and what would you want to do? I think I think for any artist in skateboarding right now, like a big goal is to do like a Nike Dunk collab. I would love to do a Nike Dunk collab. Um, I used to, for a while there, I was like painting sneakers. Like I would just buy blank white sneakers and, and leather paint and just like customize shoes. And that was a blast. I really think I could do like an awesome Dunk, especially with 12th and Market, like a 12th and Market Nike collab. Man, I would love to do that. That would be awesome. As far as like a single artist to work with, um, I mean like shit, Kanye, everyone wants to work with Kanye. I think that would just be like a crazy experience. So I would love to do that. Right, most definitely. He's yeah. like, he's been in like a different high space right now, especially with like work, uh, like leaving Gap and shit like that. Like, yeah. Gym. So it's like, yeah, you know, I can't imagine like being around him, like in his camp and shit. Like, <laughs> probably, there's probably no like, like sitting back and relaxing. It's probably non stop yeah. stress working with him. Yeah. yeah. He's already in like 2040 right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So how has uh, your city shaped you uh, and what you do? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, I mean, I honestly, I just think through skateboarding, we were, you were connected to the city in a way because um, all the skate spots, you know, there's parks and stuff that you can skate, but skateboarding culture is based in the streets and just street skateboarding. So um, that's how the city raised us. We were in the streets all day. You know what I mean? I'd get dropped off in Bethlehem or with my friends or dropped off in Allentown and we would just push around the city, you know, eight in the morning to 10 at night. And uh, you meet people, you meet locals, you meet all kinds of characters, you know what I mean? So I think all of those experiences kind of just build you up into, you know, what you do today. So um, as far as Allentown goes, it's just, it's just the sense of community. 
everything that I've gotten from the city over the years, I try to put back into whatever I'm doing, whether it's Crooked Giants and the utility connected to it or 12th and Market and like the designs we make and, and just trying to kind of pay it back to the city. Oh man, that's tough. Uh, that's a good uh, transition. So tell me about uh, 12th and Market. Uh, 12th and Market basically, that's that's the street my friend Corey grew up on and that's where we hung out all the time. It was just that was the the corner that we we skated at and just just hung out it was like the it was like the headquarters but what what 12th what i think makes 12th and market unique is it, it's not just a skateboarding company you know we we make the palette magazine and that that connects all kinds of artists from the city whether it be animators um you know illustrators videographers photographers we we just we've met so many different people from the city through that. So I honestly just think what, what makes 12th and Market different is, is how rooted it is in the local culture, in the local scene. Honestly, I just think that's what, that's what separates us. We're so connected to everyone, all the different artists in the city. Yeah. When I, uh, when I, very, when I started Raw, um, that was one thing that I knew, like wherever I was going to be based and whoever I was going to be talking to, like I'd really have to immerse myself in the community. And uh, it's a challenge, but it also is like, like you meet people you would never meet um, if you weren't like, you know, doing articles, doing interviews and stuff like that. And just pulling up to skate parks and uh, just running around the city. So that's, I can definitely relate to that. Yeah, um, like like I've just through, just through doing Palette Magazine, it's been like, I'll literally with with uh, my friend Greg, who helps me with a lot of the 12th Market stuff, we'll, we'll just like hop in the car and drive and meet someone new, whether it be like the one time we did it, we did a, a feature on this kid, Nick, Nick Corpix, who does, um, he literally presses skateboards down, like old used skateboards. He presses them down, glues them together, and then like cuts all kinds of different shit out of it. Like whether it's a bowl or it could be a knife or it could be anything. He makes all this wooden art. And we just like pulled up to his wood shop. We filmed like a little feature for the magazine and just like got to see his process. And 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 that's, that's a dime a dozen. We've done that. 10, 20 times with different all different types of artists from the city so it's just been awesome how much it's expanded my knowledge of of the art scene and and kind of just yeah just my knowledge of of how deep this shit really goes that's definitely um do you think uh there's any like real challenges that kind of stand out to you um while running like 12 and shit no no honestly no i i don't I don't make a living doing it, you know what I mean? So it's not, I'm not worried about money. I'm not worried about any of that shit. Like I have another job that that kind of just finances most of it. So I'm not like worried about really anything. As I progress with 12th and Market, it's just fun. It's what I like to do. It's what my friends like to do. We all just have fun doing it. So um, yeah, there's really no stress at all, honestly. So uh, you mentioned a few people, but um, who is really like on your team? like? Uh, who do you work with and do you have any like uh, sponsored skaters and if not um, who would you want to sponsor yeah so like basically the uh, um, the main people that I work with close to me are uh, my friend Corey Roth who he owns Roth renovations renovation company so he helps a lot with like when we throw events he builds the ramps for it um, you know like free of charge he hooks me up with all that shit so it's just that's been really helpful he comes and works in the booths when we do events and stuff um, my friend Greg, who I've known for a super long time, he's, you know, he helps me out just spreading the word with the company, you know, marketing all the events and stuff like that. So uh, I'm lucky to have like a close team that just kind of just does does stuff without even me having to ask, you know what I mean? And it's, I think that just comes from us all being just close friends for so long. You know, I've known all these guys for 15 plus years. So um, and, and all my friends make art, you know what I mean? My friend Ave is a rapper so like we're in the studio all the time and we're, we're meeting new people um my friend black dre is an artist we just you know we're always locking in and making content and stuff so it's just it everything just flows so easy it's been awesome as far as sponsored skaters go um we don't have like a team you know what i mean it's really just like homies that we know that, just rep, that rep the brand you know what i mean but as far as those guys it's like austin ortel out in uh you know he's out in like the lansdale area somewhere out there um you know we got a couple guys that like really rep the brand that like we'll hook up as time goes on we'll like really try to like help those guys out as much as we can 
that segment. Now you definitely want to like keep your people close to like social air building something. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I love this question. Um, I get like <laughs> crazy answers every time, but if you could build your ideal skate park, what would it look like? What kind of what kind of obstacles would you want? You know what? I, I've thought about this so so many times because it's like a goal of mine one day to build a crazy skate park. But I think I think it would almost reflect Pilot Magazine. I want it to be a little bit of everything, but it would be a big indoor park just so you know we're up in the northeast it gets cold it rains and shit <laughs> indoor park concrete but it would have have a little bit of everything it would have computers and stuff that kids can work on their skate videos they could have you know maybe they can rent cameras there and film for the day and and do shit like that it would just kind of have like like all the stuff you would need to make skate videos to to shoot photos to do all the stuff that comes with the skate culture you know what I mean? But I think it would be almost like more of a, more of like a compound than a skate park. Bro, that's so sick. I haven't like, I haven't heard anyone ever say like, uh, like having like tech for the, like the youth and to like film shit with. That's, that's actually really dope. Sounds like a, like a community set, let alone like a fucking uh, skate park, man. Yeah, you know who does it good? Uh, Woodward. You know, they, yeah. like the camp that they've built is just incredible. And, and they have that kind of stuff. They'll have like, you know, like Mac computers and all kinds of shit that the kids can learn all that stuff because not everyone's going to be a pro skateboarder. You know what I mean? Not yeah, everyone. Yeah, like, like that, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, and there's so many people that love the culture and love skateboarding and it's given them so much in life. And, you know, you're not going to be pro forever. That's, that's a dime a dozen. So it's, it's yeah. just, <laughs> got to get something else. And some of these people find full time careers through through skateboarding. You know what I mean? I've known videographers that have just started out filming skateboarding and now they film, you know, movies. So uh, that's important too to just nourish all that. Oh, hell yeah, man. So uh, what piece of advice would you give to someone in high school right now who hates school, doesn't want to go to college, um, but really loves skateboarding or just like creating art at home? What would you have to say for them? Um tough it out through school you know what i mean like first off just because it's such a small portion of your life just get it done do your best and just get it done but you can always do your side hobbies and your passions on the side you know what i mean get your schoolwork done but just if you want to be a skateboarder if you love skateboarding get involved go to the park meet people go to the shops you know like skate shops are such a foundation of the whole culture so just like immerse yourself in it if that's what you want to do that's really it so uh, either through uh, 12 or Crooked Giants or simply being you, how would you um, want you to build your legacy? Like, what do you want to leave behind? God, it's a deep question. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really thought about that. I just, I guess, I just want to make as much art as possible while I'm alive. And then, I don't know, maybe people will acknowledge it down the line. Who knows? That's really it. I just want to create as much as possible, whether it's 3D animations, illustrations, um, you know, designing clothing, doing these events and stuff, just just all of it put together. I just want, you know, maybe I'll leave something cool behind eventually. Oh, yeah, man. I think I can definitely relate to that because I've, I've gone to so many different mediums, but it's like, I never feel like I'm in the wrong for doing too much. I just feel like you, as creators, you just have a need to create. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's the feeling. It's just like, I honestly would go crazy if I didn't make art. <laughs> I would I would lose my lose my mind, honestly. World. The world's better with art, man, especially nowadays. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, last question, man. Um, what do you have in store uh, with Twelfth the Market and uh, Crooked Giants uh, in the future? First off, Twelfth the Market, we got the Palace 6 release event on October 22nd. Um, that's going to be in Easton, PA at Weyerbacher Brewery. That's going to be a blast. We're going to have ramps set up, people to skate. We got like 20, 25 vendors coming out. They're going to be selling art. Um, we got live performances from local rappers. All the guys I just mentioned are going to be performing. Um, so that's that's the closest thing coming up. For Crooked Giants, we have our third event. Um, we're getting worked out right now. I think it's going to be like a beer Olympics, or like a beer fest kind of thing, where all the holders will drink for free. And then anyone else who wants to come out, you know, you pay a fee for your team. And then everyone just, you know, drinking games and just fun, good times. I think that's, that's funny because it's like it's a digital, like, entity but it's like i'm glad you can get like physical people and stuff uh in somewhere yeah like that's honestly 
what, when we started Crooked Giants, and my partner in Crooked Giants is is Corey Roth, the kid I was saying uh, before, who has the renovation company. So so he works with me very closely on that, and uh, like our that's what we wanted to do with Crooked Giants. Like if you're a holder, you're gonna have benefits, and not just online shit you know what i mean it's like we do real in-person events our first event was incredible we rented out like all these um arcade machines we had like mortal kombat and street fighter and like all these like cool games and people just came out to the event just played video games all night drank beer and just had a good time it was just a blast so we just want to keep that going even if it's just even if the legacy of crooked giants is just a, a couple friends in a in a club that meet up every now and then like that's good enough you know what i mean Thank you.